Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and Her Missionaries. I want to speak to you today just for a few minutes on the subject, who are the Aaron's? I have learned over the last two years, two and a half years, that God has called me into this ministry of studying the Bible prophecies of the signs of the times and fulfilled prophecies and such, and those that are yet to be fulfilled that it really behooves uh, the person that would learn of prophecy uh, to understand people groups, the different people groups of the world, and uh, very much, very much profitable to learn where these people groups are geographically located. So we're going to talk about today something that I have found very interesting is uh, who are the Arabs? Who are the Arab people? Uh, many times when you uh, focus your ministry on prophecy and you speak on it in various places and everything, people will ask, why do you guys that study prophecy focus so much on the Jewish people when there's way more Arab people than there are Jewish people? Well, that's a very good question. Of course, we focus on the Hebrew or the Jewish people because um, they are God's chosen people, you see. And, and God tells time by the nation of Israel. But also be much aware that the Arab people are not ignored in the word of God. You see, yes, the Jewish people are significant for if it was not for the Jewish people, we'd not have the word of God. Even the Messiah came through the Jewish people, you see. And as I was saying, God tells time by the nation of Israel, for an example. Uh, you'll see on your hand out there, I've got written down Daniel 9, 25 and 26. God said to Daniel there that the Messiah would come 483 years after the edict was passed from Babylon that Jerusalem would be rebuilt. And if you do your homework, you'll find that 483 years down to the day from the edict that was uh, put out to rebuild Jerusalem, that Jesus come riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Praise the Lord. Jesus predicted that the temple in Jerusalem of his day would be destroyed uh, one day soon. Uh, after his departure and, and that Jerusalem would fall into desolation. And indeed, that's what happened in 70 AD uh, when, the Rome, when Rome destroyed both Jerusalem and the temple and the Jews began to be scattered throughout the world. Jesus also predicted that he would return after the Jews come back home to Jerusalem and uh, and especially when Jerusalem would be under control of or by the Jewish people. And we've seen this begin to happen in 1917 with the Balfour Declaration and then Israel becoming a state, a sovereign nation uh, in May of 1948. And then in June, on June the 7th, 1967, in the 12 day war, we've seen Jerusalem uh, be in total control of the Jewish people and will always be up until the time of the middle of uh, the tribulation time for a short period. And Jesus said that the generation that seen the Jews come back home after being scattered, um, the people that witnessed that, that generation would not pass away until they seen the Lord coming back. So Israel uh, in and of itself proves the word of God is true and proves uh, well, even that there is a God because there's no other nation in the history of the world after being exiled from their homeland. And Israel had been exi uh, exiled for 1900 years. There's never been a case in history, nor will there ever be. Like when Israel now has been returned back to their homeland after 1900 years of exile. In the Jewish people alone, my friends, we know that God exists and they prove the word of God is true and how he deals with them uh, in all the ways that he said that he would, you see. 
We know the word of God is inspired. It is eternal. It is infallible. It is inerrant and it is alive. And it's profitable for everything except for sin. For you see, the Bible will keep you from sin and sin will keep you from the Bible. So we thank God for the Jewish people and because God has made himself known, God has manifested his existence through them to the world. And they prove that God is a God of grace and mercy. And one day they will. It was non-believing, it is non-believing Jews that have returned to Israel, but one day they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior in the back half of the tribulation period. Now, there's much to say about the Jews, but there's also much to say about the Arabs. We think of uh, Arab identity, for an example. Who are they? Where did they come from? Many people believe that being an Arab is determined by religion. It is not so. Many believe that if you are a Muslim, you are an Arab. That is not true. The most populous nation in the world, the most populous Muslim nation in the world, I should say, is Indonesia. And you'll find them uh, on your world map down under China, out there in the ocean, you see. The most, the most populous nation, Indonesia, of Muslims. So Indonesians are not Arabs. They're Indonesians, you see. They're of, they're of um, uh, Asian descent. So likewise, the nation of Iran, for an example, is composed of almost all Muslims, but they are not Arabs, they are Persians. You'll remember that in March the 21st, 1935, Persia changed the name of its country to Iran. So now they are known as Iranians, you see, and, and they are not Arabs. The Iranians are not Arabs. Now there are also Christian Arabs, they are scattered uh, all across the Middle East. And until recently, the town of Bethlehem was dominated by Arab Christians. Nazareth continues to be the town with many Arabs, Christians living there. Arab identity is not determined by religion. Most Arabs are Muslims, but not all. And Muslims are certainly not all Arabs. Arab identity is determined by their ethnic heritage. The most amazing thing is that all Arabs have in common with all Jews and that they are descendants of one man, Abraham. Abraham. That means that the Arab-Israeli conflict is a family dispute that the whole world has been drug into. You see, this is the longest running, most intense family squabble the world has or will ever know between the Jews and the Arabs. So with this being said, we must move from the Arab identity to the Arab origin. You'll remember that God promised Abraham that he would bless him and his wife Sarah and that his descendants would number in the world as, as much as the sand, the grains of sand that are on around the oceans of the world and that his, the number of his descendants would outnumber the stars in heaven and that his descendants would make and build many nations. And God promised this and Abraham and Sarah began to get old and they uh, their faith was shaken and they got ahead of God and made a mistake and, and they both agreed to it and Abraham had a child with their handmaid, Hagar. Now remember this, remember this, this is very important when you're thinking about the Arab nation or the Arab people. Hagar was an Egyptian. Their son, the son that was produced between Abraham and Hagar, Abraham the Hebrew or the Jew, and Hagar, the Egyptian, his name is Ishmael. So Abraham became the father of the Arabs 
and the Arabs are have both Jewish, Jewish, Semitic, and Hebrew are Jewish, Hebrew, Semitic blood mixed with Egyptian blood in them. You see, so so Ishmael was half or part, part Hebrew or Jew, and part Egyptian. Now, God rejected Ishmael as the son of promise because God had promised this promise to Sarah and Abraham. Notice in Genesis chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, first in verse 20, we see a promise that's made to Ishmael that'll help you to understand a lot of things. And then we see that God rejects him as the son of promise because that's not the way God said he was going to do it. Through a He said he was going to do it through Abraham and Sarah, the where the, the bloodline would be the same. You see, complete and total Hebrew, father and mother. So verse 20 says, as, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Now listen to what he says about him. I have blessed him, I, and I will make him faithful or fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begot, and I will make him a great nation. And of course, we know that he's talking about a nation of Arabs. Look at those blessings that he promised. And we're going to find as we go through this study here in a few minutes that indeed God has been faithful to his promise to Ishmael and his descendants. But then he moves on in verse 21 and he says, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, you see, not with Ishmael, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So God finally tells him when exactly uh, Isaac was going to be born. Now God has been faithful to his promise to Ishmael Today, there are 22 Arab nations. Combined population of Arabs in these 22 Arab nations, 400 million people. Now listen, the Arabs occupy a total area of 5.3 million square miles of oil-rich land. 5.3 million square miles of oil rich land. The Jews are squeezed into one state, uh, only 8,000 square miles of space with a population of 7 million. The Arabs outnumber the Jews 57 to one. In land ratio, it is 662 to one. The Arabs have truly been blessed as God is always faithful to his promises. Now, let's talk about the different Arab tribes for a moment. Ishmael took an Egyptian wife. You'll find that in Genesis 21, 21. He became the father of 12 tribes, just like verse 20 said that he would. And you'll find that in Genesis 25, verses 12 through 16. This nucleus, this nucleus of these 12 tribes from the 12 sons of Ishmael is the nucleus, the, the largest nucleus or lineage line of Arabs in the world today. Now remember, these are people that are all mixed with Hebrew or Semitic and Egyptian blood. It's important to remember that. Now, there are other Arab tribes. Uh, one is, and you'll find in Genesis 25, verses 1 through 4, Abraham took a second wife. Her name was Keturah. And uh, in Genesis 25, verses 1 through 4, I listed the six sons that Abraham had with this Egyptian woman, Keturah, and they became a tribe of Arabs, of course, with the mixed blood of Semitic and Egyptian blood. Still, there are other tribes, there are other tribes that were sired by Esau. You'll remember Esau was the man that uh, could have been, could have been Israel, but Jacob, his scheming brother, uh, upon request by a starving to death Esau, traded his inheritance, traded everything that he could have been for a bowl of soup. 
and Jacob became Israel. So Esau, uh, of course, had a chip on his shoulder and left home, and he became the father of an Arab tribe of people. Now, our tribe of Arab people. Now, I want you to see that Arabs have always been characterized by their impulsive and violent nature. Look at it in Genesis 16, 12. He will be a wild man, God said to Hagar, speaking of Ishmael. He'll be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. He won't fight everybody. He said, in every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. So we see today that the Arabs, if you'll look at their history, all the way back to Ishmael, they've been involved in endless wars. Uh, why a lot of them have been against themselves. But today we find them at war against Israel and Christians. They have a real chip on their shoulders like any uh, son would have that has been rejected by God as being the promised son when he was a son of Abraham. He got his feelings hurt. And they're still hurt today, you see. It's been passed along to all of them. They believe they ought to be the promised son. This is where all this trouble comes from in the Middle East. Now, God gives us some prophecies concerning the Arab people that I think you will find very interesting. In Ezekiel chapter 35, it says, Because thou hast said these two nations... Now, this, this, these verses in Ezekiel, keep in mind before I finish verse 10 here, that these are end time prophecies that during the tribulation period, this coalition of nations uh, comes from this desire of Ishmael and all his descendants, the Arab nation, to want what God has promised Isaac, not what God gave them. So keep that in mind as we look at uh, three verses here in Ezekiel. 35.10 says, Because thou hast said, speaking of the Arab people, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. Now what that means is that they want what God gave them, and they want what God promised and gave Isaac and the Hebrew or the Jewish people as well. They want it all, you see. Then Ezekiel, I mean, it's, it's just a steaming hatred for the descendants of Isaac. Then look, look at uh, Ezekiel 36 and verse 2. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, has said against you, Ah, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. The high places in Israel, the places they worship God, their sacred places. They said, Even those are ours. They're ours, you see. God, God didn't give them. God did not give this real estate to the Arabs, to the sons of Ishmael, uh, Esau, and Keturah. But God gave this land to Isaac and his descendants, you see. So here we see in verse 5 of Ezekiel 36, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Adulium, Adumia, Adumia. I had trouble with that word, I apologize. Adumia, I still am not pronouncing it correctly, uh, I suspect, but you see it there. He says, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for prey. So we have to ask ourselves, who is this? Who are these heathen? And because God said, listen, in my jealousy, I'm coming after all Adumia. And because they have appointed my land that I've given to Isaac's descendants, the Jewish people. And they do it with joy in their heart and spiteful minds and cast it out for prey, you see. So God is going to bring judgment. God is going to bring judgment against the Arab people. And look what he says in Joel, in Joel 3, 19. Egypt shall be a desolation. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness 
for the violence against the children of Judah because they had shed innocent blood in their land. Now, my map is followed here, but uh, Edom, Edom is the land of Esau and his descendants. For you see, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 25 and verse 30 that Esau's name was changed to Edom. And then in Genesis 36, 8, the Bible says that they dwelt in Mount Siri. Esau is Edom. So between, here is the nation of Israel, and it was, it was uh, and then the, the land south of that was given to uh, Ishmael and his descendants. You find it in and Egypt and even some of the Sinai Peninsula and down in here. And today, these lands are Jordan and Saudi Arabia and, and Egypt still being called Egypt and even up into Syria there. So keep in mind that when he's talking about the land of Edom, He's, he's talking about Esau's descendants settling there, the tribe of Arabs, okay? And we're going to find that he talks about all the Arabs because God gave them that land, but they wanted the land that God had given Isaac and the Jewish people. So Egypt, he says, shall be a desolation. Remember, remember the Arabs have are half Egyptian and half Semitic half Jewish, you see. And he says, listen, Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence, God's just covering everywhere they live, you see. For the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. We see this happening today. Iran is furnishing Hamas there with those weapons and those missiles that they send into Israel even today. We see Edom we see the Egyptians, we see Arabs, you see, still shedding blood against the children of Judah uh, and shedding innocent blood in their land. So Edom is often used as a symbolic term for all Arab peoples, just like Israel is used for a term to describe Jewish people. When we say Israel, then we automatically think of Jews, Jewish folk. So whenever you hear the word Edom or Edomites, uh, then what you're uh, talking about is Arabs, you see. So all, the Bible says, all Edom will be dealt with because of their hatred for Israel. All Arabs will be dealt with because of wanting Israel's land and that chip on their shoulders, you see. And true, it was not their fault. It was not their fault uh, Ishmael was not Ishmael's fault that Abraham messed up and got out of the will of God and had a son with his mother and had him through an Egyptian mother. But God has to be true to his word. You see, God cannot lie. And God promised that the promised son would come through Abraham and Sarah. They will not receive that. They will not take that. God has blessed them. God blessed them with the land of their own and with nations, and, and now they're sitting on land, 5.3 million square miles of old rich land, still they're not satisfied as long as Israel is a nation. When Israel first started coming back, uh, it was a desolate place, just like God said it would after they left. The trees were all cut down as there was no uh, more topsoil, topsoil on the desert sand, you see. And so when, when Israel started coming back, the Arabs would sell uh, Jewish folks a land and happy to get the money for it because the land was useless. But once Israel became a nation and Satan got into them and there is a burning hatred against the Jewish people going all the way back to Ishmael. Now look what he says. Look at this judgment that we see that God announces in Ezekiel 35 and 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, you didn't rejoice when I gave them that land because it was desolate. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate. O Mount Siri. Again, speaking of the Arabs, that, that is a mountain there in uh, Edom and all Adunia even all of it, 
and they shall know that I am the Lord. How's God going to make them know? By making their land desolate, just like he said that he would. During the tribulation period, all people are going to know before it's over that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, that he is God Almighty, because he's going to pour out the wrath of judgment on a Christ-rejecting world, you see. So here he's dealing particularly with the judgment that he's going to pour out on the Arab people because of their hatred and how they've come against God's people. For you know that the Bible says that there's a special blessing for those that bless Israel, for the nations that bless Israel, for the individuals that bless Israel. But there's a curse for those that curse Israel, you see, for the nations that curse Israel or the individuals that curse Israel. Israel. So my friends, it's so important for America to support Israel. America will be great as long as she supports Israel. But America will cease to be great. And we see that happening as we pull back our support for Israel through various administrations. Arab promises. Now this surprised me as I was learning about the Arab people. God is a God of grace and a, and a God of mercy. Look what he promises to the Arab people. I wish they could see this now and believe this now. In Jeremiah 12, verses 14 through 17, thus saith the Lord against all my evil neighbors that touch the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. And it shall come to pass after that I have plucked them out, I will return and have compassion on them and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And look what he says in 16 and 17. It shall come to pass if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, and he's talking about the name of Jesus Christ, you see. If they'll learn about if they'll learn about salvation through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, the Messiah of the world, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. If they're just to believe on that name, the Lord Jesus Christ, God said he would save them. You see, that's what he's talking about. To swear by my name, the Lord liveth, you see. And they taught my people to swear by Baal. Then shall they be built in the midst of my people. If you just believe on the Lord the way you believed in Baal and, and pulled away Israelites to that uh, uh, worship of idols, you see. If you just believe in me the way that you believed in Baal and taught about Baal, he says, then will, but if you won't, he said, I'll save you. But if you won't, if you will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, saith the Lord. Then look at this verse. You want to see the grace of God. Isaiah 19, 22, concerning the Arab people. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. They've got it coming. It's like Israel's got one more week described as Jacob's trouble, a period of seven years before their uh, chastisement is full. The Lord's going to deal with the Arabs as well, Ishmael's descendants. He shall smite Egypt and he shall smite, and look what he says, and heal it. I didn't expect that, didn't know that, never had seen that before. And they shall return even to the Lord, the Arabs, and he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. It's like a remnant of the Jews will not be killed by the Antichrist in the tribulation period, and they're going to turn to the Lord Jesus. They're going to see Satan for who he is, and the Lord Jesus for who he is. So will others. So will others. Arabs, folks that are not Arabs, Gentiles, all will see that Jesus is exactly who the Bible says that he is. Thank God, my friends, that we have seen him for what he really is. A God of compassion, a God of mercy, and a God of truth. You see, Jesus comes speaking grace and 
truth. Amen. It is the truth that will drive you to repentance. The truth that we are sinners. The Arabs are sinners. The Jews are sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And only the blood of Jesus can wash our sins away. Though our sins be as scarlet, the blood of Jesus can wash them white as snow. When Jesus died on the cross, my friends, he didn't just die for America. He didn't just die uh, for the Hebrew people. He didn't just die for the Arab people, but he died for the sin of the world. It's all been paid for. And any individual, no matter what your ethnic group may be, you may come to the Lord now just as you are. Come just as you are to the bleeding, dying land who died on the cross of Calvary, was buried, and rose again for your justification. Will you come to him now? Will you believe on him now? You see how hateful the Arabs are to the Jews and the Jews back to the Arabs. But God's going to win them all. God's going to show them all and win all and win and give all of them. I, I shouldn't have said win them all because they're still going to have a choice, of course, and not all of them will get saved. But according to the Bible, the biggest majority of the Jews that are alive during the tribulation, after Satan has done all he can do to kill them all, will believe. And it's the same way with all other people groups, whether it be Arabs or, other, or people from other places in the world, are going to have a chance to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you come to him now? Why wait? Why don't you come to him now and believe on his name? so that he can save you to the uttermost. Will you do it? Will you just pray after me, Father? Oh my God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. I ask you to forgive me my sin. For I believe Jesus died for my sin, was buried and rose again. Would you come into my heart and save me, Lord? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope you've prayed that prayer. If you have, you need to get in the Bible believing church get baptized for a testimony for what God has done in your heart. Would you do it? You will always be glad that you did. Amen. Thank you, beloved. God bless you.